Welcome back. So I'm going to open up the panel conversation. So if everyone that's joining in can, um, you know, open your videos and I'm going to uh, put us on gallery view. It's always nice to feel like we're in the conversation together and can see each other. So um, first of all, just thank you so much and just the deepest gratitude for the experience that I've been having and the transformation that occurs in the moments of awareness that shows up as we allow ourselves to be enhanced and altered in these beautiful conversations. As each one of you shared your unique, beautiful alignment, I could feel my own alignment adjusting and changing. And so I'm excited for the panel conversation. This is a place where we get to just, you know, dive into who we are and how we see each other and how we see the world in this fun way that, that brings it all together. Um, so I'm just going to start with some of the, the things that really, um, you know, I'm curious about after hearing everybody. And I know Sean's going to be joining in and asking some questions. His, uh, his energy and his mind is so beautifully curious. So I'm excited to see what he brings forth too. So I just first wanted to start with um, Professor Stan, I'm going to say this name properly, Staninger. <laughs> right? Uh, when you were talking, I loved the conversation about um, how the, the mystic traditions facilitate the conversations of us uh, interconnecting. And when you were talking about the space of the individual story, this is a space for me always, the sharing of a story, whether it's the moment I had on this call or a moment from a year ago. When I do that, I know it always opens up space for another soul to experience their own story, which creates that beautiful dialogue. Um, I, I'm wondering how it is that you, uh, you know, do that and facilitate that in those spaces when people have been taught to be so uncertain and unsure of who they are and are afraid to share the story of themselves, just even in a conversation. You know, what is it that you, you can, you do to facilitate that for us? And, and I'll need you to unmute. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, thank you, Laurie, and thank you, everybody. Uh, and yeah, uh, in my own journey, um, one thing I've found uh, through struggles, mostly, mostly by being displaced, because I was not even born and raised in Kathmandu, I am from a remote village in Nepal. And for me, the transition from the village life to city life was as shocking as coming to America and trying to mingle in here. And uh, every time, um, of course, there are all different types of human beings. Uh, some may be judgmental, you know, some may take advantage of you, but uh, um, I have always started with my vulnerability um, not, not with perfection, like with my own students in class, I share my own limitations um, and uh, my own struggles. And uh, when students say, just for example, professor, you have no idea what I'm going through. So basically at the end, I can't do these assignments. So I, I, I first, was very reserved because I was scared because I'm coming from a very different background and I don't know much about America. And slowly, it's just human beings. It's just the same. And kids are kids, you know, students are students. And, and when, I, when I share them, some of the horrors I've endured, and, and I tell them, look, I understand you are going through hardship but if I could do it, if I could endure, so could you. And so my own point is, 
my own vulnerability is what I start from. I, I, don't, I don't need to be perfect. Um, I, I am just like any of them. And uh, I never present myself as a spiritual guide. Um, and, and even then when I like to help them, I generally like to find a, a connection through empathy that because I share your pain too, or because I have similar things endured, therefore we have some kind of common ground. And uh, it rarely matters. Many of my friends who come from really different like Jewish or Muslim cultures, and it doesn't, it has not come to um, our, attention, many of my students in Hindu philosophy have come from the Middle East. And first, I know they feel awkward because of our cultural gap. But eventually, when I get to know them and they get to know me, we are just, just the same beings. And I think that my own vulnerability is what I would say, uh, Lori is my, my initial ground to start a conversation. I think that's beautiful. And I'm sure we all feel that, right? When you go into your own vulnerability and share, it just does this thing and allows such an opening. One of the things that I see in all of the, the sharings today is this common thread of that it all first starts within. And then as we allow that joy and peace and compassion and awareness and, you know, mystic connection here then it easily moves to the next and the next and the next in such a bigger way um tina when you were talking about um you know the movement of the energy it's such an important place that we need to have in order to um you know integrate those moments of like oh I just was transported to a new awareness so beautifully. Uh, can you speak a bit about to those places for yourself when you have, um, you know, been in that moment of, oh, something is transitioning and, and how that movement has supported you? Mm. Well, it's, you know, interesting. I'm, I'm sitting here, even as I'm digesting what's being said, I, my, my, I probably notice my body swaying. It, it's like, it, once one is in the flow of energy, it just keeps flowing. And so the trick is to allow that flow, to allow yourself to move and be in it. And there, there are things that I will often do in like, in this moment of like, ah, ah, but hands to heart, feel that um, kinesthetic connection, anchoring that brings that moment into a, a cellular memory is really important. And it doesn't matter what the physical anchoring is, whether it's hands to heart or you know, fingers in a mudra or whatever it is. Um, yeah, movement, uh, kinesthetic, action of some sort can really help to to settle those moments those ahas those insights into a more cellular memory when we're physically engaged with the experience uh, you know we just recently started my daughter and i doing mudra work because she uh, gets anxious and then I get anxious because that moves back and forth. And I was working with a, um, a coach and they suggested all these outside awarenesses for her, like a, a toy or something to put her scared or her angry in. And I said, oh, I desire more for a connection into, into, into our, ourself so that no matter where we are, she would be able to, to access that. And so we started doing a sat satanama and it's so powerful and beautiful so thank you yeah. um so i would like to you know before I, I have many more questions but i would like to put it out to everybody to speak to um what it is that they use to anchor into you know what it, what do you guys use to anchor in when you know that you're tra transforming in a moment uh, because everybody does it a bit different. And so to share a bit of how you do that, how you allow that, 
that anchoring in of the moment so that someone who uh, is resonating with you can say, oh, I might be able to do that as well. Um, so maybe we could start with Charles. Would you like to? Um, if I understand your question, the, the first thing that, um, that I do is that I, you know, I, I've been taught that a, a master, he or she is one who is aware of every breath they take. And so I first go there and make sure that I'm grounded. So uh, Tina brought up the hara, or the tantien, things of this nature, so that I'm grounded. And then I, I call on the, the, um, the divinity in, in, invoked in my, my mantra. And I ask for uh, guidance and ask just to be in the space of someone. I, I, um, I also, I mean, I do EFT also. I mean, we, we wrote our book, EFT for Meditation, and, and that's something that also is a way of, of clearing things, but it, it, um, it's these kinds of things, depending upon who's in front of you. The, the breath, though, is something that even uh, in my experience, in my, I won't say clinical because I'm not licensed, but in my coaching experience, you know, I can, I can use, say, for instance, this uh, EFT, and a person will calm down, but their breathing habits won't change. The habits that their autonomic nervous system are producing, those bad habits don't change. And so there needs to be more work there. There needs to be you know, some, some serious work there done. And my modeling it basically is how I would say there'd be the connect if I understood your question correctly. Yes, thank you, thank you. Steve, would you like to share? Uh, yes, I would, <clears throat> please, thank you. I've, I've had several thoughts in this process and uh, so appreciate the opportunity to have dialogue with everyone. I wanna ask a real basic fundamental question and that is relative to a state of peace. You muted yourself. Oh. And uh, the question yeah. is this, can you be at peace when you are thinking or acting incongruent? The answer is simply no, you can't. You cannot be at peace when you're incongruent. If you're using words like need, should, have to, must, which are all disempowering words of the ego mind, and you're wanting to create something positive, something transformational, something miraculous, if you will, then the bottom line is the only vocabulary that goes along with that is, I choose, I will, I want, and that's I require, and that means to be very clear about what it is that, what is the outcome you really do want to create. Now, what you don't want to create, what you do want to create. Uh, this has to do with discernment. Three Ds in, in my book, discernment, discipline, discipleship. Discernment is transitioning consciousness from hearing the word, everybody hears the word. Everybody hears the word. How many people choose to listen to the word? Listen to the word. And then once you master that, you move into a state of uh, discipline. And discipline is trusting in the word. And the last part of the, the transition of consciousness is uh, discipleship. And that's acting on the word. And therefore you integrate. It's not hypo hypothetical anymore. See, 
we've talked about the mystic. Who is the mystic? The mystic is the person who knows that they can choose. That's the literal, you know, mystic, the mystic is the heretic. The heretic means the person who knows that they can choose. And that means that they have transitioned consciousness from a state of, of pumping air through their mask of illusion, suffering, ego mind, and they proclaim the truth of the I am, that they are co-creating, nanosecond after nanosecond. And I want to encourage a conversation with everybody beginning right now today. Go through your books. If, if, you're, if you're using the word need, should, have to, must in your book, I'm, I'm sorry. You're, it's, you're, 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 teaching, you're, you're teaching the exact opposite of what I know in your heart. You really do want to, to share with people. Begin to monitor how many times a day either you or someone else you know uses the word need or should or have to or must. Let this be a benchmark, you know, where your consciousness presently is. As I mentioned before, <laughs> I'm 63, just turned 63. And um, I've got 63 years sanskaric, as the Hindus call it, this sanskaric uh, groove in the consciousness for 63 years of these poor habits. You know, I've tried to extract myself from this consciously, moment by moment, every day, you know, as a gardener, pulling these weeds up out. You know, I don't just uh, just pluck the weed out. I, I want to pull the root of the weed out of my consciousness, and to have my my word, my thoughts, and my words congruent with the word. Right, and if we do this, you know, I can say, well, you know, I I need to do that. Dang it! I said that word need again. <laughs> All right, and then immediately reverse it. Oh, I, I choose to create that. And just keep asking, keep up lifting the definition of what it is you really do most want to create in your life. I choose, I will, I want, I require. Completely different set of outcomes, completely different set of people that show up in your space, completely uh, different set of miracles. The miracle is always here. It's always in front of us. And I Our just, I just, just want to add something to support what you're saying, Steve, because sure, please. this became a conscious uh, practice of mine about 10 years ago, where I really started to watch for those very words that you're talking about. And yes, I know yes. that in the process of doing that, there's been the biggest transformation in my life has come from that. I mean, I wake up in the morning and I, I ask myself, what do I choose today? That's my, my opening walk into life. Oh, today I choose joy. Today I choose patience. Whatever it is, I'm going to choose. So from my personal experience, I just want to validate what you're saying and what a difference that mm. that can make when we pay attention. And, and I wanna thank you for bringing that story up about the pay attention, the two words for the parents. You just start yeah. putting post-it notes all over the house that remind me, pay attention. <laughs> pay attention. So yeah. your, your, story, your story reminds me of um, the, my eating habits. And uh, I have a fairly, compared to the regular American lifestyle, pristine diet. And so people would always say when I first changed my lifestyle, they said, oh, you can't eat that. I, no, 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 no. I can eat anything I want. I choose not to have beef or I choose not 
so you know your your um, your point is is well taken, and and the, those words we need. Aha, we have to be aware. Yeah, and and even the word "have to be aware," right? Mm -hmm. Suppressive. Right. I choose to be aware. Right. It's so subtle. It's it can be you know we've uh, as as you've kindly and graciously pointed out, you know we've. We've had a long habit of these thought patterns. And yeah. we are, I promise, we are at a, a tremendously pivotal time in humanity, in consciousness. This, this, par this parliament is, is, can, can serve and will serve as a um, completely transformational opportunity for people. And if we, and, and when we choose to apply these um, realities of these, these new states of awareness, right, to simple things, it's, it's our thoughts, you know, speaking consciously as we possibly can, you know, uh, removing ourselves from all states of drama, mm -hmm. you know, side talk of other people or negative things that are occurring and only really focusing on what we do want, then the bottom line is, guess what? That's the miracle. So, you know, you also brought up the, the thing of, you know, and, and everybody has touched on that. We're, we're dealing with, you know, dealing with ourselves and it, uh, it brings to mind, you know, these conditionings you know, and what you were talking, what you're talking about is the conditionings, all the negative conditionings, these conditionings, and the um, the thing that I marvel at is the story of the um, Tibetan Lama who was uh, tortured by the Chinese and came out and had no hatred, no animosity toward the, his Chinese captors, and I'm going, not possible, and I'm thinking, wait, 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 and I. I understand in studying the, the, the scriptures, yoga sutras, the, the, the Vipassana texts that these lamas and things are trained with, the, the practice of loving kindness. And, and to your point, Steve, it says having loving kindness, developing equanimity towards uh, something evil. And it says not, not even evil, but something that's different from you. And the equanimity, it says, it says you can't begin to even start having equanimity until you have loving kindness. And this is the point that you made in the beginning, until you have loving kindness to your very own self. And that was the most profound thing, loving kindness. And then it can spread out. It can't be loving kindness even to a close person. It has to be you develop loving kindness here and then maybe a neutral person, you know, and then develop. And then loving kindness is the very first one of the Brahma Viharas, which I'm sure that my good friend here, Thanishwarji, knows those Brahma Viharas, okay? The, um, so uh, it's, kind of in, it's kind of important that, um, you know, in whatever way that it's being said, uh, this conscious uh, languaging, it's the things you put in your mind. Every morning when I wake up, mantra okay amen this, this positive this positive thing whatever whatever it is you know whatever your mantra is whatever tradition you're in you wake up you know i mean you wake up with a prayer on your on your on your breath you wake up what's what what's conditioning and we, we break down these conditionings because again you know the conditioning that i was brought up with that that somebody who looks like me is not worth a nickel in this country okay there's a whole lot of deconditioning that had to go on there for me to even be able to be uh, a person who aspired toward the depth of spirituality that this whole symposium is directing itself to. And yeah. if, I, if, I, if I had a, can, can share a little comment. In, in uh, the Bible, just as a reference point, it says, resist not evil with evil. Mm -hmm. Resist it 
with its equal or opposite good or love. And Thich Nhat Hanh, the great Buddhist poet, says the healing of the self is the healing of the nation. Yep. Yep. And the Course in Miracles says, you know, the salvation of the world depends on who? Please remember this. This is so important. The salvation of the world depends on who? You. Yeah. Each of us waking up to be present, you know, to the to the to the truth of the divinity of who we already are. Mm -hmm. And when we own and proclaim that truth, as you so wisely pointed out, love thy neighbor as thyself, <clears throat> loving thy thy true self, right? And the only thing I can see in, in your eyes is, you're my brother. Yeah. You're my yeah, sister. That... You're, you're the sacred reverend Mother Earth who gives me breath, feeds me, nourishes me. And it's no longer us and them. See, the word enemy literally translates to mean not friend. I'd also like to encourage people to eliminate the word blessing from their vocabulary. If you look up the root, the root origin of the word blessing, it means to take blood from a murdered or sacrificed animal and spackle it onto another human being. Wow. That's what it <laughs> literally means. Wow. So, it is uh, something every day. There's learn something every day that that I have always had a, a kind of a question about the blessing, and I'm going to going, but I never knew it had that origin. That's that's the root, that's the root origin of of the word. So, certain very esoteric, dark forces take very um, positive words, like heretic. How many people would say the word heretic? Good word, bad word. Most people think heretic means you're a crazy person. You're in left yeah. field without a glove. The word heretic means the person who knows that they can choose. Where are they choosing from? They're not choosing from external circumstances or external philosophies. They're choosing from where? The kingdom of heaven within. Jesus, Buddha, Krishna, Muhammad, all of them called heretics. Why? They weren't choosing from the conformity. Mm -hmm. So the more we proclaim the, the mysticism of, of being the heretic, no longer pumping, choosing to pump air through our mask and to remove the mask so that we're are present with ourselves, then we are present to the world. You know, you know, uh, I, I it, it brings to mind this um, this um, this thought. You know, you said the word enemy, and in my entire life, somebody asked me about enemies. I said I've never had an enemy. I don't have any enemies, and and um, I, I think about the you know the 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 um, there's um, uh, Ramakrishna, who was a famous uh, sage, and then there was uh, there is the Ishu Upanishad and a conglomeration of things. There, you know, uh, Ramakrishna came up with this idea of you know talking to the Divine Mother, asking her to to lift the veil of of the the, the world bewitching Maya. So. The issue Panchad says, so we can see beyond the golden disk that hides the face of reality. And so, you know, the things we're talking about, the things you're talking about are just rem removing the veil, you know, move it, moving the disk so I can see, oh, you know, the, the light's shining in my face, I can't see, M moving it. So all these, you know, the conscious languaging, the being aware of the, of the energy blockages and things in the body and removing them, these are all things to help us to recognize and increase the subtlety of our awareness to the point where we can rest and abide. And yeah, let me, if I, if, if, if I may also add, think of this in just reality. 
Mm-hmm. Francis Crick, the co-discoverer of DNA, likened d- DNA to a crystal. I'm 63. I got you being 69. Oh, <laughs> you, I, you, you're such a handsome, nice man. So uh, I remember we used to call radio sets crystal sets. Mm-hmm. And that's because there was a physical crystal embedded within the circuitry. That's what picked up the radio frequency. Now think of this, right? Think of, think of the reality of how God has created this. You start as a single cell. You divide into this complicated organism called a body. How do you think this works? Is it magic? I don't think so. This is cymatics. See, the DNA of the body basically holds the blueprint or the Akashic records of where each soul has evolved to in this particular time and space coordinate. The Om, the Amen, the Buddha, Muhammad, Krishna, Christ consciousness goes into the DNA and it fractures it into the harmonics where we believe we're separate from the divinity of the I am. We already are. And the goal is to become cognizant of where we're in these fractured states, or as you wisely point out, these maya, the veils of separation. Or as Buddha said, it is your attachments that causes your suffering. And to become conscious of where we're in these fractured states and then consciously collapse these bandwidths, again, like taking white light, run it through a prism, you fracture it in the bandwidth. You take the same fractured light, run it back through, what do you have? Singularity. So when you consciously choose to collapse these illusionary mayic bandwidths of perception, then you become into a state of atonement. And in that state of full atonement, we're in Christ consciousness, Buddha Conscious, whatever we want to call it, and this becomes a very can become a very um, methodical uh, process. This is the whole reason why we're here, you know, is to discover where we're still attached in these fearful states, and to liberate them, you know, with a state of love, a state of kindness, a state of self care, and um, boy, <laughs> I must say. I really learned a lot about this. I mean, I mentioned briefly that I I just, I was hospitalized for COVID many nights. I didn't know if I was gonna live. I just couldn't catch my breath. I thought I was going to, I had a, my beloved, you know, she hadn't been there. Wouldn't have survived, simple like that. And so it gives us pause to really understand how, Every moment is so precious and how every moment is to as you you so wisely ask, you know, when you wake up in the morning, you know, what do I what, what do I want to create? I'm so excited. You know, it's like I'm a little kid at Christmas time. I get to open every <laughs> present because I'm the present. I'm the present. I'm the present. And when we do that, then we we just get to see every and all possibilities that are available to us to empower, you know, shift, be the best, most loving, kind human being we can be. And when we integrate into that with the power of our volition to go, why am I here? What is my purpose? And what can I do today, this moment, now, to contribute to making the world a kinder, loving, or caring place? I promise you, when we do this and we shift this the vocabulary of need, should, have to, must, into words I choose, I will, I want, I require, you can see miracles. You, 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 can't, you, can't, you can't even fathom. I've lived this. I'm, I'm honestly, I'm bulletproof. I've, I've pulled off people, stuff people said was literally not possible. Steve, I just want to jump in here. 
and um, you know comment that there's such a beautiful thread between all of like everyone has been talking about how to be really present in this uh, the space of the joy and the compassion and the love and how to find that place for each of us and I just want to invite professor uh, Stanisher it's like every time I go to say your name I get nervous I'm going to say it wrong and yet I know how to say it <laughs> so I just would like like to invite you you know you've been listening to everything that's been being communicated and shared and I'd like to invite you to share from your perspective what what you're experiencing in the in this conversation and and what you bring to the world in this place of being present thank you everybody um again um there's a lot for me to absorb learn from everybody from uh, all of your experiences you know it's a it's a human experience is endless and uh, with regard to change uh, lori that's where we started where do we anchor ourselves and how do we face i have felt two types of transformation within me one is i'm aware of the need to change when i realize that this is not going to work sanesh or you have to change yourself you can't be stubborn about it it's not good for you or it's not good for your family or your students or your friends you have to change yourself and then another type of change is i know that people want me to change and in i i find these two totally different categories uh, uh, lori because um in one i acknowledge the need to change and i'm i'm actively opening myself to the unknown on the other hand i feel so compressed and judged and i recognize that i am forced like walls are closing if i do not change then you know i'm not going to fit in here and i better start thinking this way or i better i better start speaking like this and uh, so in in one change i feel like my self collapsing when i'm forced from outside and when i'm forcing myself to change i feel like blossoming so i think that when most people like why we are having so much of social uh havoc like is because people need to change their their you know stone as ideas are not going to work for modern world but they have been told they need to change and they are not ready to because it's like they they have to somehow accept how that change is required from their heart and then in my own case where where am i like even we know we joked around not finding my own even nationality in in the heart sense and not finding my own ethnic ground anyway so i i always tell my students a metaphor of a dead log because my longest meditations were by the banks of a kali river in in nepal and that river always brings some dead logs and then and then what where i'm where i'm getting at is is like a absolute surrender at the end of the day where am i going uh, what is my life going to unfold as is is like i'm bound to at the end surrender to something i do not know why is because um it, things are not just going to always happen the way i want it and i'm like a dead log carried by this giant river this strong current and all i can do is let me have a good ride you know i want to pretend that i am like floating so that i keep my agency a little bit but but at the end i also want to recognize that i'm just a dead log being pulled by this ginormous current and i hope that current is like some kind of divine current and is not like some mad crazy thing but i don't know what that is you know i i can wish it is like a good current but without surrendering to that we are going to find a real hard time uh and and uh, any time i have resisted the required change it just lingers the inevitable and most of us cannot make progress in life 
when we resist the required change that's that's what i felt Renee. thank you i i too feel that space of <laughs> wishing to be in that flow and and when the resistance occurs what happens to us all um i just really i want to just express my my gratitude i you know, it has been such an amazing place to sit with you all and stand with you all and be near you all as we, um, as we grow in and expand in this, this conversation. And all of you have really shared that the place starts here within. And I, I want to thank everyone for the beautiful gift that you are, because I remember the beginning place for me. I, I didn't even know how to be within but I remember those people that I saw that I could tell were somehow in this alignment of themselves. And, and I knew that I wished to go there. And so for all of us to be in these places of truly ourselves and, and shining who we are, just in, increases that momentum and that ripple for other people to go, Oh, I wish to go there. <laughs> and so I'm so grateful for all of you. We only have a few minutes, very, very short minutes, um, so that we can all join on track one. I encourage everybody to join on track one for the celebration. So, um, you know, if everyone just has a few words, you know, a sentence or a few words that they could share uh, to close up, that would be wonderful. So, um, Tina, please, yes. I just, yes, I want to say thank you to everyone. It's so amazing to me how, as you say, we all are talking about coming from this place within that the peace, love, the kindness, compassion that we want to see in the world has to begin with us. And the Shin Dao, Shin being heart, Dao is the way, the way of the heart is living with love, kindness, and compassion for self first, so that you can ripple out from that overflow. And that is my wish for everyone participating in this World Par Parliament of Spirituality, that you find your way of Shindao living from your heart. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Charles. So I, I just will say um, uh, words of wisdom from Buddhist source, the, the, the Dhammapada, if I'm remembering correctly, the Buddha said, the great of the past only point the way it is we who must make the effort and so that's my thought thank you professor well coming from uh, the uh, teachings from tantra i would say that everybody is divine and that power that makes all the possibilities lie within us and we can make a difference in our lives and in the lives of everybody on earth. Thank you. Steve. <clears throat> the salvation of the world depends off on you. The salvation of the world depends on you, each of us, to wake up fully realize. I want to share with you personally, you know, a resource for any and all. We developed an app called Third Ear with one of the greatest sound healers in the world. And this is a free app 24 seven globally. It's uh, sound healing, it's gongs, inspirational music by Peter Gabriel, um, some of the most amazing gu guided meditations. And it was originally designed for veterans and active duty soldiers and refugees. And we've just made it free for any and all people around the world, hospice, what, whatever application there is. It's called Third Year. And I hope it is a resource for your daughter because the first bone to develop in the fetus is the ear bone. The first sense to develop in the fetus is hearing. The last sense to go when you die is hearing. Music is the only art form where right and left hemispheres work simultaneously. This is done through sound. So thank you. Thank you so much 
for the clarity, uh, the wisdom, the love, and the presence of you holding the space for this dialogue and for each and every kind person I've had an opportunity to interact with here. You guys are so, so wise. So, so loving. Thank you. Thank you for who each of you are. We all feel that deeply, deeply. Such gratitude for all of you. Sean, do you want to add anything quickly? Honestly, I have nothing to add. This is beautiful. I have learned. I have grown. I I have basked in the light and wisdom of, of these amazing people. And all I have to say is, I see you. I love you. Namaste. Thank you. I just want to finish on uh, last year, my daughter, she's a 22, beautiful soul shining with Down syndrome and was awarded a beautiful award. And she was able to give a speech. And the words she said were, I see you, you are beautiful. I love you. That's an incredible way to end. Thank you. So we're going to end the track and, you know, encourage everyone to join on track one. For, for the celebration of this such a gift to know you all. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lori. Thank you all. Thank you. Amen. Amen. So, Steve, if you just leave the meeting, you'll be able to join in. Oh, okay. I'm one. sorry. Forgive me. No, no, it's okay. Just I, I want you to be able to join in on track one so you can be a part of that. Okay. Do you uh, have access to the track in, in your information? Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure. I'll, I have the link, so I'll, I'll, I'll just have to find that. Oh, perfect. Yeah, if I can suggest privately to you, you know, the insight of your daughter. Yeah. I see you. The reality is, I can't see you until I first see myself. Yeah. And that's, that's, the, beauty, that's the beauty of you. Yeah. yeah. So She's an amazing way of, of letting you know that... Um, uh, she sees she sees herself through me and and I see myself through her and and uh, she's a she's just this divine amazing soul so thank you thank you so amen. much amen amen yeah. okay you. thank you again right. yeah. So this is down at the bottom of your screen, Steve, there should be a okay. red button that says leave meeting. Okay. And I just, I don't want to leave you stranded. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> oh, darn, I just passed it. Got it, thank you. You're welcome. Well, that kind of ran itself. Right. Amazing. Sometimes it just happens like that when all the souls just are, you know, doing what they need to do. Yeah. yeah. With the right personalities, they're, they're willing to jump in and, and, and actually just commentate on what the other one said. So it becomes a conversation uh, rather than uh, an answering of questions. So. Yeah. yeah, the conversation is such a... Thank you. I, lo I love the conversation. I love, you know, being curious and bringing that to a place where people can interact in it in a way that's so unique. Yeah, thank you. That was beautiful. That was powerful. Yeah.
Yeah. It's a great Thanks session. for joining. Oh, yeah, I liked it. They're just, uh, everyone is so different because the, the conversation is so different, right? Such diversity, yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, Steve, probably, I mean, it was cool he was here, but he, he probably should have been uh, in the uh, arts and culture yesterday yeah. uh, with yeah. his whole connection with the music. Um, oh, so beautiful. But anyway, I mean, it worked perfectly here, too. Yeah. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah. So, so I guess we head over to track one. Yeah, that's what I'm going. That's where I'm going. And it was lovely to All right. you. Same here. I'll All see right. you over there. All right. Bye. Ciao.